Do you need netherwood in a hurry? Well, if so, you've come to the right place. Here we're sacrificing a little bit of efficiency for speed. And by speed, I mean we're talking about 8,000 of these nether logs per hour. You'll get about 4 per fungus and about 1.75 per bone meal. But I'll link you two farms, the fungus farm and my melon farm, into a composter. So all of those things are free. And this is a nice, tiny, compact setup. Hello and welcome, this is Eagle Eye 621 and what you see in front of me is that tiny farm we were just talking about. You can see exactly how tiny that sucker is, and without further ado, let's get right into the materials to build it. And this is what you're going to need. Let me turn off the clicking so that doesn't become very annoying in this video. And what you're going to need is right in here, but bear with me for a few moments. You're going to need 16 full blocks, one half slab, two observers, a sticky piston, 10 bits of dust, specifically a dispenser. You're going to want a hopper and a double chest, although you don't really need the double chest or the hopper, I highly recommend it. A lever as your on and off switch, a comparator, and four of these repeaters. However, if your axe is slower than mine, you're going to need a few more, and I'll explain that along the way. And then you're going to want two of these warped nylium blocks or the crimson nylium, and whichever color you want, you want to go with the same warped fungus, and then as much of this bone meal as you can get a hold of. Let's get that into the inventory. And in terms of these perfect tools, I will have a link. Uh, you can have any axe you want. Efficiency 5 is highly recommended. If you can't have that or it's not netherite, again, I will show you. It's very easy to change up some timings. So let's get started. And we're going to start by building a couple of blocks off the ground just so that you can see what's going on. And I'm going to use this warped nylium as our main block. So we're going to have two of them. And I'll explain why in a second. Let's clear this so you can see what's going on. We're going to have our dispenser, and that's going to be facing over the block we just placed, just like that. And into this, we're going to add our hopper, and on top of that, we're going to add our double chest. And of course, we want to fill up this dispenser with all the bone meal that we have, as well as into the hopper. And then we can fill up this chest with all of the extra, and you can of course, include and make that go further if you would like. Now we're going to want to have an observer, and this observer is going to be facing in, so just like this. And then also, we're going to just push it to the side so we don't have any clicking that we don't want to have happen. And then we are going to want to have an observer that's going to be next to it, just like this. So one's facing up, and the one facing down, and the output of the one facing down is going to be pushed and pulled. And when it's pulled, it'll be pulled directly into this other observer to make your nice observer clock. Now we are going to have to power this bit of a sticky piston. So let's grab some blocks and we're going to come out this way. And we can do a little bit of counting. This is one, two, three, four five, and six. And then we can come out this way and make some connections. And we can have two more going out just like this, but you'll see exactly how this all lines up as we put this comparator down. And this comparator is going to run into a set of redstone dust just like this. And for our very simple timings and our clock, we're going to put some repeaters down and the repeaters and the delays are as follows. We have this one on its original one tick. We have this one on all four ticks. We're gonna have one more on all four ticks and because I'm using a perfect ax, we're going to put this down and put it on three ticks. Now you can increase this timing by continuing to build this up, but we don't need any additional timing and I'll tell you how to fix your timing. And then we can break that and you can see this is all very nicely connected. Now we are going to want to add our lever. And we can put our lever anywhere on any of these blocks. I'm just gonna drop it here, and we can turn that on. 
And you can see that that has caused our sticky piston to extend and locked this whole thing on, which is exactly what we want right now. And then in terms of how we're going to stand, you're going to want to come a half block under. So you're going to stand just like this. So you can see that we do have a half air block gap underneath that one. So that when we stand here, all of our reaches are in perfect working order as you can see from the one that we have over there as well. And we're actually all done already. You, if you're in survival, will need to have a little staircase for yourself, but you'll just build this a little bit closer to the ground. And the way this operates is also very straightforward. Now again, we used our warped fungus because we're using our warped nylium. We can switch over to the crimson and the crimson nylium, although for reasons I don't fully understand, you do seem to get more wood with the warped fungus, so I don't know if that's just a testing anomaly or if the wiki may need to be changed. And we're going to get the axe in one hand and we're going to put the warped fungus in the other hand. Now the reason that you have two of these, and we can just place our first one down, but well, before I put that down, if you have some issue, and I'll show you what issue you can have, where you're going to block this, so let's just grow this just like this, and then we can turn this on and cause this to grow. If you leave your farm in this state, this is exactly what happens. This turns into the regular block, and the thing about a regular one is, if you hear me clicking, you can't plant a fungus on it. So the reason that you have this block next to it is because when you have a block next to it, when you hit this with a bit of bone meal, it converts back, and once again, we can now place our fungus back on it. So to operate this, what we're going to do, and this actually needs to be done in survival, because if it's in creative mode, you're actually a little bit too fast. You turn this lever on, you hold down right click and left click at the same time, and you can see just like that, we're getting four per growth. And as soon as we get to that fourth, the clock turns back on and our fungus grows into another nether tree. I don't know they're not called nether trees, but I think that's a much better name. And then we can do our F3 plus T trick, which you press F3, uh, you hold F3 and press T, then you let go of your mouse and the game thinks that you are still holding this down and you can AFK just like this. And most of the logs you're going to get are stripped, but not all of them. I'm just going to end this just like this and break this and plant this back just like this so that we're this is how you want to leave your farm so it's ready for next time and then you will just have to walk around and collect all of these blocks after your very short afk session and you'll have all the wood that you need in order to make your fireproof wooden structures which is really what this is good for and that's really all there is to it. You do the exact same thing if you swap both of these blocks with the crimson and then the crimson fungus to get the exact opposite. And I said your stripped and your warped stems. Found this video helpful? I would appreciate a like, found it interesting, maybe even share it with one of your favorite Minecraft YouTubers to see if they will build this in their world. And for more videos just like this, do be sure to subscribe. Now one last note, just in case there was a little bit of confusion, if you have a worse axe, what you're going to want to do is increase this, just like this, and add more repeaters. And this is just kind of a strange looking but effective clock to have the longer pulses. So we take this and we increase the times and now we can add even more delay and the way you know whether you are adding enough delay is you should have enough time to chop down four logs in a row before the next tree grows. If you are waiting too long, then you shorten this. If you aren't, then you just keep increasing this until it is at whatever speed your axe is ready for. And as I said, it is as simple as that. If you are interested in discussing this, I do have a Discord linked in the description and a join button if you're interested in supporting me in that way. Thanks for stopping by.